Ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to be doing a lab called gel electrophoresis. This is one of the ways scientists like to test your DNA. Compare DNA samples, where we can actually hold your DNA up to another DNA sample and see if it's the same one, or see if you're related to someone else. So let's see how this works. Now I've not noticed a difference between the different levels. I've run this a couple times. So let's just pick number one and move on. And to get a little context, what's going on here. In this simulation, you will conduct gel electrophoresis to separate different solutions of dyes. What do you need to know before this laboratory starts? Gel electrophoresis is used to separate biomolecules such as DNA and RNA in an agarose gel composed of tiny pores according to the size and electrical charge. Oh, that was a mouthful. Look down here. See this block? This is a type of gel called agarose. And there's little wells in there. We're gonna put your DNA in the well and we're gonna dye it different colors. In this case, purple. That way we can't see DNA, but this way we can at least see the dye moving. This gel has a whole bunch of tiny little pores in it, like holes. Like you have pores in your skin, there's pores in this gel. And the DNA needs to move through the pores of the gel. So the smaller the molecules, the further it's going to be able to go, the easier time it's going to have moving. The larger the molecules, the harder the time it's going to have moving. So it won't go too far. So smaller goes farther, larger molecules stay up top. An electric current applied to the gel migrates the charged biomolecules toward the oppositely charged electrode. Since DNA fragments have a similar negative charge, they all move toward the positive electrode. Again, that was a lot. We are gonna hook this bad boy up to some electricity. And electricity moves from a negative charge to a positive charge. So all the electricity is flowing in this direction. Your DNA is also negatively charged. And if you learn anything about magnets, you know that like charges repel each other. These are negatively charged. They don't want to be on the negative side. So they're gonna get repelled away. Negative charges are drawn to the positive side. So they're gonna get drawn toward the positive side of uh, this agarose gel. So, that's what's going to make them move, the electric charges. Similar molecules will move through the pores in gel, uh, sorry, smaller molecules will move through the pores in the gel faster than larger molecules, allowing the smaller ones to go further. Loading dye is often used to visualize how fast the gel is running and adds weight to your sample, allowing it to sink to the bottom of the well. So the purple dye, helps it stay in the well when we want it to, and it helps us see it. That's what that says. All right, so that's what we're gonna do. We're going to set up a virtual version of this gel. We're gonna put in three samples of DNA, and we are going to run them next to each other. So, your materials. Solution one, two, and three are our three samples of DNA. The sodium bromate buffer is the liquid that this all stuff is gonna be working in. This is basically salt water. Salt water helps electricity move better. And then we got some pipettes and pipette tips. So they're like really fancy eye drops. We have our agarose gel that we're gonna study the DNA in. We're gonna put the agarose gel in the electrophoresis box. This is what we are going to run electricity through. We have a power supply and some wires, and we have this thing called a centrifuge. We're actually going to spin our samples to get the DNA to settle down in the bottom. And then a trash can. So, predictions. In this simulation, you'll be using gel electrophoresis to separate three different dyes. These dyes differ in size, with the yellow dye being the smallest the blue dye being larger and the purple dye being the largest. If these dyes were all equal in negative charge, how, they are equally charged. How far do you predict the dyes would move in their lanes during gel electrophoresis? And drag it down. 
I am not going to do this for you. At this point, you are going to do your own prediction. So first, second, third. Remember that yellow is the smallest one. So you're gonna drag this to either, oops, that's not behaving for me. First, second, or third, wherever you think it's gonna be. And this one, first, second, or third. And purple, first, second, or third. Don't be nervous about being wrong. This is a hypothesis. This is your prediction where you think it's going to be. This is smallest, this is medium, this is largest. So what are we going to do? We are going to prepare the electrophoresis box, the centrifuge, uh, the solution tubes, and we're going to spin them around. Draw up solution one, pipette solution one into the well pipette the other solutions into the wells and then conduct electrophoresis. So let's start. Your directions are on the side. At this point, if you are comfortable just reading through the directions on your own, then you can turn off this video and just follow the directions. If you would like me to walk you through it, stick around. Hey, select the agarose gel right here, the agarose gel. B, place that agarose gel into the electrophoresis box. Just drag it in. Oh, we need to open the lid. C, orient the wells of the gel towards the negative electrodes. Click on the box, and here are the wells. We want them on the negative side. And pour the flask of the buffer over the gel box. So here's your buffer and pour it over the gel. We get rid of our empty glass. Next, select the centrifuge to open the lid. Here's our centrifuge. Click on it to open it up. And we want to move our samples one by one into the centrifuge. This is going to spin it around really fast. Balance the micro centrifuge by placing the tubes so filled receptacles are symmetrical. That means we want to spread them evenly. So move it so you have three empty spaces in between each one. And check balancing. Centrifuge looks balanced and ready. Select the micro, uh, micro centrifuge to close the lid. There we go. Press the pulse button to briefly spin the liquid to the bottom of the solution tubes. Pulse for 30 seconds. It's sped up for us, that's fun. Open the lid and remove the tubes to put them back in the rack. And then close the lid, always close the lid. Make a note in your notebook to show which solution is piped into each lane. We didn't do that yet. I don't know why it sounds to it first, but see this little pencil? So you can write whatever you feel like writing. S1 in lane one. S2 in lane two, S3 in lane three is what we plan on doing. Select the P20 micro pipette that is over here. That's the yellow one. So it says P20 right here. Let's get over here. Select the volume. So it is 10 nanoliters. That's what that symbol means, nanoliters. So we're set for two, we want it to be 10, that's three, four, that's four and a half, five, five and a half, six and a half, seven, eight, 10. Save volume. Select the P20 tip box to open it. Drag your pipette over to get a tip. And then 
Select the box to close the box. Always close your lids. Select the S1 solution to open it. And place the pipette in there. Now this is where you want to be careful. You're going to click this to reach the first stop and then let go. If you reach the second stop, you, you grab too much. First stop and then let go. All right, now close the lid. Next. Take your P20 pipette and move it over to the gel. Pick the well you want. We said S1 is going in well one. And you're gonna expel liquid. Again, only press for the first stop. If you hold it in too long, then you'll overflow it. Cool. Done. Move the pipette over to the trash. Eject tip. If you don't want to reuse that. And we're just going to do the same process for S2, for sample two and sample three. Put our pipette away, close our samples. Place the cover over the box. And select the red and black cables and connect the red and black connection points on the power supply and the red and black connection points on the gel electrophoresis box. I'm gonna grab this red one and put it in this red slot. And I'll put it in this red slot. Got the black one, put it in this black slot. And I'll put it in this black slot. All right, turn on the power supply. Here's your on button. Set the voltage, voltage is right here, to 130. You have zero volts, so it's added up. Set the timer for 10 seconds. Here we have hours, minutes, and seconds written right down here. So we want the minutes at 10. Nope, that's 11. There we go. Start the timer on the power supply. Our time is sped up. In the real world, this would be a full 10 minutes. All right, and now turn off the power. Unplug the electrodes from the power supply and the gel box. Carefully remove the cover from the gel electrophoresis box to inspect your gel. Okay. 
So to actually inspect it, we go to the next section and it says results. Look at the relative position of the dye bands in your gel. The bands in your gel have different colors because our samples are, are colored dyes. Typically, the bands in gel will not be colored. In the ideal result in this experiment, the blue band would have migrated the least distance through the gel, the purple would migrate further, and the yellow would have migra migrated the farthest. They're talking about this one down here. So, this was the predicted results. I did not do one. That is up to you. This is the results you actually got. So this was the experiment. This was your prediction. This was your experiment. And this is what you should have gotten. So as long as you did it right, it should look like this. And we are looking pretty good. Based on size, you may have expected the blue band to migrate further than the purple dye and the yellow dye that have migrated the farthest. In practice, the larger purple band would move further than the smaller blue band. This is because not only the size of the fragment, but also its charge determines how far it migrates in the gel. And the purple dye has the greatest negative charge per mass than the blue dyes. As a result, it migrated further than the blue dye in the gel despite being the larger size. So even though purple was bigger than blue, it had a stronger negative charge, so it had a stronger pull toward the positive side. Normally, everything would have the same charge, so it would be the size that matters. All right, at this point, we are going to stop using this uh, website, you're gonna go back to Google Classroom and there's a Google form waiting for you to answer questions. You can keep this picture up for comparison, but you will not be clicking on anything else. Good luck on the Google form and let me know if you have any questions.